the Bible with the Holy Spirit showing you. Good morning, morning, branches. branches. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beloved bride, beloved branches, thank you, Lord. Beloved of the Lord. We give the Lord thanks this morning for putting breath in our lungs and waking us up in the morning. And before we even get out of bed, we thank the Lord for his mercies and we rejoice in him. Hallelujah. Amen. We say thank you, Lord, even though it's snowing out right now again. Huh. It's snowing all over the world. Yeah, we thank you, Father, for the snow. We thank you when it's not snowing, for the rain, the sunshine, the clouds, everything this morning. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. Thank you, Lord, that you are faithful. You know, the Lord invites us to come in with thanksgiving in our hearts, right? And praises on our lips. Amen. And the fruit of our lips, give thanks today in song and in words. We bless your holy name, Lord. Hallelujah. I want to share a scripture, actually. Psalm 119, starting at verse 37. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things, and revive me in your way. Establish your word to your servant, who is devoted to fearing you. Turn away my reproach, which I dread. For your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your precepts. Revive me in your righteousness. And this is what we pray today, Lord God. Yes. Thank you for your word, Lord. That we would long for your precepts, Lord, to know you, to know your word, to know your commandments, to know what you've written in these pages, Lord God, by the Spirit that is in us, the revelation of the Spirit today. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, just fill each one that's gathered today in the chat room and all our warriors from all around the world. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So, this the lyrics in the song say, Your love heals every disease. Your love fulfills my every need. Your love is everything to me, and your love is everything. Yes, his love is everything, and we do thank him for his love and his grace. But I'm going to change some of the words to his word heals every disease. Amen? His word fulfills my every need, right? Even though, yes, he does love us, but his word. We can trust in your Amen. word, Lord. And just along those same lines, what you just said, I wouldn't even say that love is the greatest thing, even though the Bible says... Paul says the greatest thing of those three things is love. But love is, is is a great thing, but it's not the greatest thing. It's God's grace. It's God's holiness that is the greatest thing. Because we're saved by yeah. grace. Not by his love. We're saved by his grace. His love just initiates that grace. That's right. I was going to say that, yeah. For God to love the world. It's you know? important, but it's not the most important thing. It's, we we yeah. always need to remember we are loved by our Heavenly Father, and that's a wonderful thing. But we can't make that the only thing. Amen. Amen. Okay, go ahead and start. When I'm 
trying to see more And I'm crying out for more I know I can trust in your word In the darkness of the night When I'm starving for the light I know I can trust in your word You keep no record of my sin Your love heals every disease Your word fulfills my every need Your word is everything to me Your word is everything Your word heals every disease Your word fulfills my every need Your word is everything to me Your word is everything Lord. When I'm dry and thirsty, Lord, and I'm crying out for more, I know I can trust in your word. In the darkness of the night, when I'm starving for the light, I know I can trust in your word. Of my sin. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't remember all my shame. Oh, my shame. Oh, your word heals every disease. Your word fulfills my every need. Your word is everything to me. Your word is everything. Your word heals every disease. Your word fulfills my enemy. Your word is everything to me. Your word, I will not forget. I won't forget your promises. I will not forget. I won't forget your love. I will not forget. I won't forget your promises I will not forget I won't forget your word I will not forget I won't forget your promises I will not forget I won't forget your word I will not forget I won't forget your promises I will not forget I won't forget your word Oh, I will not forget Nothing is impossible I will not forget I won't forget your word I will not forget Nothing is impossible I will not forget I won't forget your word You keep no record of my sin. Oh no, Lord, you don't, you don't remember all my shame, all my shame. Your love heals every disease. Your word fulfills my every need. Your word is everything to me. Your word is everything. Your word heals every disease. Your word fulfills my every need. Your word is everything to me. And I will not forget. Oh, I will not forget. forget your promises. I won't forget your love. I won't forget your words. Oh Lord. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He you said your word is above your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You are faithful and true. You are the faithful and true witness today. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You are the fortress of my soul. He's the fortress of our soul today. <laughs> you were the word at the beginning One with God, the Lord most high Your glory seen in all creation Now revealed What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing can stand against, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was great. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is, who well, nothing can tell to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, the silence that boasts of sin and grief. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus For oh, death could not hold you The veil tore before you To silence the boast of sin and grace The heavens are 
Jesus for the cross. Thank you today, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that in your spirit, by your spirit, we would have revelation today, yes, deeper revelation of all that you've accomplished at the cross. And when you said it is finished, what does that mean, Lord? It is finished. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. We're going to head into the word. Thank you, Jesus. And as my sister Jules likes to say, I hope you all have your journals <laughs> and your Bibles and your coffee. <laughs> Hallelujah, we're just getting set up here. Crazy Jesus. Now, so far we've been going over um, God reveals his power through the cross and he reveals his love through the cross and he removed our sorrows and our grief and our sickness through the cross and he took the punishment for our sins on the cross. Today, we're going to go into uh, new relationships with God through the cross. New relationship with God through the cross. Because our God is so holy and righteous. Sin separates us from God. And I know these are, are kind of the basic teachings, but it was just really on my heart. The Lord wants us to revisit, to revisit the cross. 
And we know that sin separates us from him. And if there is any sin in our heart, we cannot go into his presence. No one can. So when Jesus died on the cross, he not only suffered for our sins in our place, but he made it possible for us to, to know him personally and to experience his love and his joy and his peace. And when we have fellowship with him, we experience all these things. We can go into his throne room boldly through the cross of Jesus, through the blood of Christ. Those that have received him in their life have accepted his free gift of salvation. Jesus made it possible for us to become acceptable to God. Except the woman in the beloved, I believe, is through the cross. And Paul made. And and what does religion do? Religion can't give us a relationship, right, with God. I mean, I've been there. You've been there. A lot of yous have been there. Tried that, done that, bought the T-shirt, wore it. You know, it's full of man's traditions, and it's works based. It's based on uh, popular beliefs. And man's own righteousness. Just, I'm going to stop you there. Or I'm just going to add this. Anne said that it's it's full of man's traditions, and I think that's important. That's important to keep in mind here because the thing, the main issue that the Lord Jesus had with the Pharisees, right, was, and he explained it to them mm -hmm. about the korban. He said, "You take your traditions and you make them. You make the word of God null and void." Right. It, it sort of works as a, as a traditions sort of work as a, I'm not even sure what word I'm looking for here, but it, uh, it takes away all the vibrancy and it takes away all the true meaning, the deeper meaning of the actual word of what God actually said. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, this is the, your major issue is that you've taken the word of God, you've made it null and void because yeah. you've elevated your own traditions, the traditions right. of they men They had, what, that. 600 extra laws or something? 614. And I think the Pharisees were were one of the the, the, the strongest sects. Oh, they were. Pharisees started right? out very well. The reason Judaism survived the persecutions of the successors of Alexander in the 2nd and 3rd centuries BC was because of the Pharisees. Yeah. Antiochus the Fourth, Epiphanes had tried to wipe out Judaism. Yep. Tried, tried to wipe it out. And it was the Pharisees that yeah. kept that lamp alive. So And yet they became one of the worst. But the, by the, the time the yes, by the time two hundred years you know, later the when Jewish... the Lord appeared, they were stuck in their traditions. You know, right. They had served their purpose, but yeah. now right. they were working against what the Lord was mm -hmm. trying to do. Yeah. And all these things. And it doesn't matter how self-determined we are in our religion, how self-motivated and all this stuff. And it ultimately leaves us feeling guilty, uh, disappointed, unfulfilled, right? When we, Because we're going to fail. And we fail over and over and over and it, when we're just going by a religion apart from God. Um, but unlike religion... Our relationship with God comes from his amazing love, his grace reaching out to us. God has always wanted to show himself to us since the beginning of creation. That's that's why we were created. Can you read Romans 1.20, please? Or as you may recall, that God walked with Adam that's in what, the cool. That's right. In the garden, in the cool of the evening. Romans 1.20. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without right. excuse. excuse. And this is why we were created, is to have a, a living relationship with the Father, with God. We were designed this way. We were made this way, made in his image. Mm -hmm. And we can't deny that there is a God we're made in his image. I mean, it's all around us. He's all around us. We were designed for relationships. Um, and that's why God made Adam and Eve. Well, he that's made, he certainly made, why he made he, Eve. He made Eve to have a relationship with Adam yeah. as as a companion. Because right? I remember the first, uh, the first, um, was, man, this is getting bad. I'm forgetting words. Uh, 
anyway, the Lord said that it was not good that man should be alone. Um, malediction is what I'm looking for. Benedictions were all, as God saw what he was made, and it was good. That's a benediction proclaiming how good it was. Mm -hmm. The first malediction in the Bible, what is bad, is the fact that man is alone. Mm -hmm. And we know the story of Adam. He rejected God's command, mm -hmm. and that's what started the whole thing. You know? You, hey, you were supposed to be watching over me. Yeah, I know. Tending to yeah, your you're garden. You're right. You're right. We're just as right? good. It's not like Adam was at the, <laughs> it was not like Adam was at the office when this all happened. He and, was right and there. And sin entered in. Sin entered into creation. Uh, sin brought everything down. It broke our union with God. Um, and the result was death, shame, judgment. But through the cross. We now have a relationship with him. We have a restored relationship with him. And I know this is this is a lot of simple stuff that we already know, but No, it's not. It's important stuff. But to but know. we need to be reminded because there's not a lot of this preaching in the church. Religion is in the church today, a lot of churches. And religion can't restore our relationship with God again. It can't. No ritual, no works, or no acts on our part, no sacrifice on our part can provide payment for our sin. We're not a works-based religion, like live your best life now and all that stuff. And, or as God said in the Old Testament, you know, I um, do not delight in the sacrifice of the blood of bulls and goats. That's right, that's right. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Anyways, um, we can never measure up to the glory of God. God's glory is his splendor. Amen. 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 God's glory is his splendor. And it's the outward display of, I guess you could say, his attributes. It's the outward display of his attributes. And you know what? God wants us to share in the splendor as his believers, as his children, as the church. And I think that's pretty awesome. I think that's pretty awesome. And we can tie that in with what we said earlier. This is where the love of God comes in. His relationship with us. Yeah. Not our salvation. Well, that's part of yeah. it, but it's not the main part of it. But love, the love of God towards us. This is this mm -hmm. is where it it actually takes form and shape and 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 exerts itself and shows itself in relationships. Because we know that through our own human relationships, we show our love through our relationships with others. God does the same thing with us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But there's one thing that stops us from experiencing um, the richness of having a relationship with him. And some of you may be asking today, well, why would a supreme God even be interested in, in us humans? Why would he even want a relationship with us? We're just, just read Psalm 8. We're imperfect. We're fallen. We're fallen human beings, exactly. you know? Exactly. Well, let's look at some scriptures here. Ephesians 1, 4 and 5. Can you read that? God chooses us for a very special purpose. Ephesians 1, 4, and 5. Sorry, I'm yeah. getting this up for the folks at home. So you know where we're at. Ephesians 1, 4, and, four and five. 5. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, <clears throat> that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Again, there we see the operation of love, the, the proper operation of love. And what God began in the past, he's going to complete it in the future. Amen. Until the day he comes. Amen. I mean, it's his purpose through his son, Jesus. He's, he's come to make us blameless and without blemish. 2 Corinthians 6.18 We are his children. Maybe I should read it while you put the scriptures up. Okay. Corinthians, what is it? 6, verse 18. 6, 18. And we are here. I will be father to you. Actually, he's quoting the Old Testament here, isn't he? Anyway. 
Uh, I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. What a promise. That is amazing. So we're considered by God, our Father, his children. We've been adopted into the family of God, into the kingdom of God, and he is now our Father. And that's one, he's a good father too. Yeah, he is a good father. He's a good father. We, we're redeemed. We're again sealed into a special relationship with God, our Father. We're adopted, and God becomes our Father. Christians can now approach God through an intimate relationship and even calling him Father. Romans 8, 16. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that amen. we are children of God. Yes, amen. God values us as his precious treasure. He has made it possible for us to honor him um, with, with these temples, with our bodies, and, and our spirits. We were bought with a special price, the precious blood of Jesus. 1 Peter 1.19 Hmm. No, I'm going to start at 18. Okay. Uh, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, mm. hmm. but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So a personal relationship with God begins with knowing his son Jesus. And you know, while we're here on earth, our relationships, they change, right? I mean, we've all experienced this. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, a friend leaves or, or whatever, and um, things change in our life. We were designed for change. We're designed for change. But Jesus, well, he is changeless. Amen. Jesus Amen. is changeless. That's he right. never changes. He says in his word, he's the same, he's the same today yesterday. as he was yesterday. Today. And he'll always forever. be the same Hebrews 13, forever. Yeah. That's right. That's right, honey. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when we draw near to Jesus and have that living relationship with him, you and I can't help but be changed. We, we must be changing. Because you know what happens when you leave water in a pond and it's, it just sits there and there's no life coming That's right. in and out of it. It becomes stagnant in this green film comes all on the top because there's no oxygen, there's no air, there's no life in and it. And things live there that you don't want living there. No, in the Black Lagoon. <laughs> but there's true forgiveness at the cross. And we would be hopeless today. Amen. And I think that is um, the next point that I want to make is we receive forgi forgiveness through the cross. Hebrews 2. Oh, wait, no. Um, Col Colossians 1, 13 and 14. I mean, we'd be hopeless today. We would be hopeless today because of the sin that separates us from God. But God's grace gives us hope. Amen. His grace gives us hope and gives us as Christians, us as Christians, hope that one day every everything soon will be eternal, will be in eternity. That's yes. what I'm trying to say. Everything soon will be eternal. <laughs> well, Everything that is corruptible <laughs> will be made incorruptible, yeah. as Paul would say. <laughs> he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into <clears throat> the kingdom of the Son, Son of, of his light. love. There you get a good perspective of where love is. Mm -hmm. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness mm -hmm. of, of sins. sins. The forgiveness at the cross. And this is made possible by the cross. Every single one of us is born into sin. We're dead in our sins. Every single person. What does forgiveness mean? Well, I think it's a release of something or a dismissal of something. Christ offers us forgiveness and it brings a release to us from God's penalty. And it dismisses us from all charges against us. Mm -hmm. That's what it does. That's what, what forgiveness does. 
Romans 8, 1. A very famous passage that you mm -hmm. all know and we all stand upon. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according, according to, to the spirit. spirit. For the life. Oh. Just, two, just two. keep, yeah, keep okay. it reading. For the law, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free, free from the law from of sin and death. death. For what the law could, could not do, do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God, God did, did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. Amen. He condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be, be fulfilled, fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to, to the, the flesh, flesh, but according, according to, the, to spirit. the Spirit. Hallelujah. So the penalty has been canceled. And with the same measure that we've been forgiven, God requires us to forgive others. No yes. ifs, ands, or buts. That's a command. That's a command. It is. It's in the prayer that the yeah, Lord taught yeah. his disciples. And and it's, okay, it's not a weakness to forgive others. It, that's not a weakness. No. no. I mean, those that may hurt us or that may have wronged us all our life, it's, it's not like they... They win and we lose, right? When when I come to do the study, on, or when we come to do the study on the parables, I've been doing mostly more. Mm -hmm. Lions been doing the cross. This is this theme is like uppermost, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to say this: if right. you do not forgive others, that's a death penalty to you. It isn't just okay. Well, you know, right. God puts a strike. This is your life. This is life or death. Mm -hmm. Whether you forgive others, and when we forgive others, it's a deliberate act of love, of love, mercy. Grace, being gracious to others. And God showing his love through us when we forgive others. It's it's when we decide, and it is a choice, when we decide to, we're not going to hold anything against anyone, mm -hmm. against that person. Even though they may have done terrible things to us, we're going to wipe the slate clean. Amen. Forgiveness is such a big part of sal salvation. It's a huge part of salvation. Absolutely, it is. Oh. When See, when Jesus forgives us, he wipes it all the way. He casts our sin as far as the east is from the west. And we've heard that saying. And they never meet. That's right. They never meet. It's totally erased. And when Jesus said it was finished from the cross, he was really saying it is stamped. It's paid in full. Paid in full. So when God forgives us of our sins, we're free. We're no longer living under the law. We're no longer living under that debt. All our sins are erased. And we need to believe that. That when we go to the Lord and we ask him to forgive us, Lord, forgive me for being angry today. Forgive me for falling in that lustful habit. Forgive me for whatever it is. Just forgive me, Lord. And, and he erases it. And God will never again hold that sin against us. Psalm 103, 12. As far as the east is from the west, yeah. so far has he removed our transgressions from us. And we can't have salvation without this forgiveness. And Christ Jesus set the ultimate example for us, right? By giving his life on the cross and he said father forgive them for they know not what they're doing because our before we come to the lord our spirits are dead we can't even comprehend the things of the spirit kingdom things we can't even worship him in spirit and in truth because our spirits are dead and as we are called as christians to forgive it's an essential part of our lives ephesians 4:32 it's, it's so important. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, mm -hmm. even as God and Christ forgave yes. you. Yes. We have to be kind and compassionate to one another. And we're going to mess up. I mean, we do mess up. And that's why we go to our Savior. We go to Jesus. 
and he forgives. That's right. We ask him to forgive us. And that's the difference between the world. Right? They, they, it, things just pile up and pile up. And, and when I was living in the world, it just piled up on top of me. And then the, and the more you don't forgive, the more your heart gets hardened. And the less you, you're able to respond to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. The key in both of these verses, Colossians 3.13. Did you read that? Nope, but I can. Yes. I'm going to start um, in 12. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, right. meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another... Even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. So what's the key in these verses? We have to forgive each other. We have to forgive others. That's the key in these verses. Just as God forgave us, remember, we forgive others because God forgave us. Mm -hmm. So we don't, we don't keep a list of, of wrongs. I mean, God's not up there on his big master computer going, that's 10 for Anne. That's 14 if for Richard. Because if he did, then Psalm 103, which we That's just right. read, would That's be a right. lie. He's not up there with a big hammer. He doesn't keep a list. And we shouldn't keep a list of wrongs either. What did Jesus say? We're to forgive 70 times 7. Yep. 1 yep. Corinthians 13, 5. Thirteen five. Thirteen five. And we have to do it as many times as we have to. Yeah, we'll be talking about that in the parables yeah. as well. We'll be studying the parables. Parables. The pair of bells. The pair of bells. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> really? What is it? First Corinthians 13, 5. 13, 5. Okay. So we don't keep a list of wrongs. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself and is not puffed up. Right. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own and is not provoked to think right. no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity but rejoices in the truth. Amen. And if we don't, if we don't forgive, eventually the resentments turn into bitterness turns into anger all oh, these these things start festering in us and it changes our character it really does yes it does it changes our character when we're angry all the time and I know and we don't forgive and, and it doesn't look anything like Christ and Jesus wants to mold us and shape us our potter who is God God our father our potter he wants to mash this clay down and it's a painful process and he wants to shape us and mold us and in the way he wants us to yeah and change our character into into being christ-like forgiveness always brings reconciliation and healing amen it yes, always yes, does yes, in yes. relationships yes it does i mean some people don't want to receive it they won't receive it but so in that case it's more it's it's it, it's always for our benefit as well you know irregardless of whether they they want to receive it or not we still forgive and then we're cleansed and we're clean and and you know that's not to our account and we can move forward in the lord and and our character is changing and to be more christ-like so well you just before you go on and you touched on something there we are required to forgive even if the other person doesn't receive doesn't it receive you it. are still obligated by the lord as yeah. his child to forgive yes Yes. And then it will not be counted towards you. But if you if you don't forgive because they don't forgive you, that will be charged to you, to your account. And yeah. you do not want that. And we need to take off the limits and learn to forgive others. We need to take those limits off of ourselves. And we need to ask God to give us a heart like his. Mm -hmm. And the this past little while, um, in, in our chat rooms, that's what we've been talking about, being broken, being broken before the Lord. And and, allow, and, and, and I always remembered this saying, it's better for us to fall on the rock 
Christ Jesus and be broken than to have the rock fall on us and be crushed to powder. Because that's what will happen. We'll be crushed to powder. We want to have a heart like Jesus that is um, quick to forgive and to love others. Because each time we choose not to, we're in danger of our hearts hardening and becoming bitter. And, and we're, like I said earlier, we're building these walls up around us, right? And we're keeping God's love out. And our hearts become hardened. And, and, and we don't sense his conviction and we don't hear his voice. And that's a dangerous place. That's a very bad place. And, and also, we don't um, know the discipline of God. And God says that those he loves, he disciplines. So if we're lacking that discipline of the Father in our lives, that should tell us something as well. We better yes, get right. on our face and seek out the Lord until that comes back. Paul even said that if, if the Lord is not doing some sort of work in your life, some sort of discipline right. in your life, you're illegitimate. Yeah, you're we, an illegitimate we are, child. Yeah. We are if, if, if we're not being careful. We're not being careful. walking in that forgiveness. And I think most of our troubles today would be solved if we just learn to forgive, to love our neighbor as ourself, you know, and, and just say, honey, I forgive you. You know, will you forgive me? It's really important in a marriage. It, oh, definitely. Well, you know what? It's we really we important. probably wouldn't have made it this far in our marriage if we didn't, you know, learn to do that. If we if we weren't. But again, that way. we talked about this before, and the only way you understand it is you, if you make Christ the center of the your center. marriage, the center right. of your family, the center of your marriage. Mm -hmm. He's the one that has to direct your relationships. And even if your husband or your wife um, isn't walking with the Lord, don't mind my phone, um, you still forgive. And, and you know, you, you still ask for forgiveness. And even if they don't, they don't want to uh, forgive or ask for forgiveness. You just leave it before the Lord. And it's very humbling. And, and it's a very humbling experience, but we need to humble ourselves. We, we need do. to show grace we do. to others. It seems hard um, to do something sometimes because to, to, to ask for forgiveness because it goes against the flesh. It goes against the pride that's in us. And if we feel that we have a hard time asking for forgiveness or forgiving others, that means that there's still pride in us that our flesh is still very much alive, very much alive. Right? Yep. God's ways are not our ways. And, and uh, Sister Jules, or Jules, <laughs> Jules, Jules just, just spoke on that um, Monday morning. I will give you. You know, it's in Isaiah 55. Was it Isaiah 55? Yep. Isaiah 55 verses uh, 8 and 9. 8 and 9. I know because I just looked in this yesterday on my study in the parables. So there you go. It seems hard to do some sometimes because it goes against our flesh or our sense of what's right and fair. What's right and fair. We also forgive for our own sake, as we talked about, so we can be free. I mean, we don't want to leave any doors open for the enemy. That's true. We do not. That is so important because when we're sitting here and we're festering and we're we're going back over things and, well, I can't believe he said that to me. I can't believe he did that to me. I mean, that was just so rude. Or how can he be so insensitive? How can how can she have like just forgot that we had we had a dinner date or we had whatever it is, you know, like, man, I can't believe that. Well, the more we fester, the more we think on those things and, and our minds are becoming wide open for the enemy to get in there. Right. And he has access to our heart. Yes. It starts with a thought gets in our ear. And if we don't cut that off right away, you know, we don't he's whispering. If we don't cut that off, it goes in our mind and then it eventually makes its way nine or ten inches down into our heart. And then it becomes a foot foothold and then a stronghold and then it turns into this bitter root 
you know, and we, we can't have that. And I think pride is the biggest reason why we don't forgive because ultimately it's, it's at the root of everything. I mean, that's why we fell to begin with. That's why Satan fell that's right. because of pride, right? I, 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 and don't get me started on that because don't get her started on that branches. Don't get no. her started. Thinking about all the worship music today. No. Everything's I, I, me. Don't and get me started. All the pronouns. and That's, uh, that for both of us, that's a real. As I was studying this, um, the, this, I don't know if any of you have heard of Corey Ten Boom. I'm sure they've all heard of Corey. And her testimony. But there, there was a story that I heard, one of her experiences years later. She went to this, um, I don't, it was this meeting. She was in a meeting. I think she was invited to speak there. I think, yeah, she was invited to speak there. And she came face to face with one of the concentration camp um, guards. guards that actually tortured her and was mean to her. But since then, he gave his heart to the Lord. His life was changed. But she had one of the hardest times. Because he came and asked for her forgiveness. Yeah, after yeah. the end of that meeting. And she had one of the hardest times. She, she Everything within her was just screaming, no, yes, no, no, no. But And you can understand that. I think we can all understand that. But she prayed. It, she prayed and she asked the Lord, Lord, I can't do this. Give me strength. I, I know I need to do this. This is right. I want to love this person, but I need your strength. And so she stuck out her hand in faith. And it was by faith. Because without faith, it is impossible well, to please, please God, God, right? Okay. By okay. faith, she stuck out her hand, shook his hand, and that forgiveness just came flooding in. And she was able to forgive to, him. To truly forgive him. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, that's beautiful. It was like, like back when I was 16 and when I was raped, you know, and, and then later on when I was gang raped. I mean, now I can talk about it and I'm totally free from guilt, from shame, from hurt, from pain. Even the memories, you know, have been erased. I don't even remember faces. I don't remember anything. It's like the Lord did a thorough healing there. And, and it was like Corey Ten Boom. She made the choice. She stepped forward just as, um, again, you know, Jules was talking about every step she took toward God or toward her, her husband, her, her bridegroom, that she was making a choice to be with him, to do the right, like to do the right thing. However. No. I yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, um, I mean, she couldn't do it. So. I mean, so, think about that. Just that example. Just think about when, if somebody says something to you that offends you, that, and, yeah. and, you know, you you find it hard to forgive them. Think what this woman went through. If, if, yeah. if you don't know, go watch the story of Corrie Ten Boom and watch everything. Die that, and her yeah. kinsman dying. And, and watch all those things that happened. And she was released from the concentration camp yeah. a week before the Allies took it over. And those memories that, was a that, miracle that experience that was a miracle in itself experience <laughs> that was the experience God. of herself and then years later having to come face to face with that time and God is asking her you need to forgive how hard would that be for that how hard that would be for all of us yeah, yeah. we would all respond the same way Corey Ten Boom did yes Lord I know I need to but I don't want to and I won't or and I, I pray that we would all say what Corey said but the only way I'm going to be able to do this is if you do it through By your me, spirit. because I can't do it. I, I know I can't do it in my flesh, nor do I want to. And that takes maturity in the Lord. It does. And it obedience, does. right? Absolutely. And obedience. So, and having that relationship that we're talking about, the relationship God right. and the cross. And you know what? Sometimes God will put us in situations so sure. that we have to deal sure. with yes. those things. Yes, that's true. He will. He did right? what Corey so, did with you. So either we... We keep going around the mountain, keep going around the desert, or we face up to these things. And you know what? God has a way of getting at those hidden things in us. He has a way of getting at those hidden things in us. He sure does. Amen? So 
I want to encourage us today, right now, if there's anything that's, we're just going to ask the Lord, Lord, I ask you now, Lord God, to just reveal, reveal things right now in our hearts that need to be dealt with. Any resentments, any anything that we're holding against anyone else, any grudges. Lord, give us the grace to forgive. Help us to choose to do the right thing, that we would choose forgiveness every time. Yes, Lord. Right now, Lord God. If the Lord's bringing someone to mind, or a situation to mind, someone that you need to forgive, I would encourage us today to to just go out and do it by faith. You know, ask that forgiveness. Call that person up and just ask them to forgive you and confess. You know, confess one to another our faults. And um, there's a blessing in that. There's freedom in that. I'm telling you, there is freedom in that today. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, for your forgiveness that we have been forgiven, Lord, and that we can go out and forgive others, Lord. Fully, yes, Lord. fully, fully forgive others. Yes, because you pour your love in us. You poured your love in us. Right, Every last drop of blood was your grace for us. And you said it is finished. It is done. There's no more. There's nothing more. You can't add anything more. You can't take away from it. You can't add it's been finished. It's fully accomplished. We thank you, Jesus, today. Lord, pour out your love in our hearts. Soften us, Lord. Give us hearts of flesh. Take out these stony hearts, Lord. Help us to forgive our husbands. Help us to forgive our wives. Help us to forgive our children, our exes, our mother-in-laws, our father-in-laws, just our brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and cousins and our co-workers you know and our grandparents and anyone Lord God that you put on our heart help us to forgive in Jesus mighty name and fill in that place Lord with your love and fill us with your Holy Spirit Lord over and over and over again break us for what breaks your heart Lord help us Lord God to be strong in you. Your strength will be in us, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, for the joy of the Lord that is our strength today. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Lord. Amen. I am yours. 
channel, Vine and Branches, and you haven't made that decision. Well, I just want to encourage you today to just cry out on the Lord and cast your sin and your cares and everything upon him and just say, Lord, you know, the word of God says, just believe on the name of the Lord Christ Jesus and you shall be saved, right? Believe that he is the Son of God. And as Christians, you will know that we are Christians by our confession we believe and I believe that Jesus came from the Father he was born of a virgin he walked the earth and he was sinless he was crucified on the cross for my sins and he was buried in the tomb three days and the Spirit of God raised him from the dead and he ascended into heaven. And he is now back at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us all. And this is my confession. And if you believe that today, if you believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. So, and if you have said that, well, welcome into the kingdom of God. And now go out and find a church, a good one, Find another believer, and I pray that the Lord will lead and guide you. 
and fill you with his spirit today. He will bring believers across your path where you can um, have fellowship. You can continue watching the broadcast with us and, and grow in the Lord. Be discipled. You know, the, the word of God says we're to go out and make disciples, right? Raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. You know, heal the sick. Share the gospel and make disciples. So, I thank you, Lord, today. Go out and be a blessing to all those around you. Amen. God bless. Bye-bye, and we'll see you in the a.m. tomorrow. <laughs> Love you all. Bible with the Holy Spirit showing you 